You still haven't answered my question. How did you know where to find the corkscrew, Terry? That looked like the most logical place for a corkscrew. Hmm. Oh, will you stop staring at me like that? I'm good at hunches. That's why I went into police work. I make a great detective. I do say so myself. Yeah, you certainly do. And I apologize. Apology accepted. You know, Terry, I find you a very intriguing woman. Intriguing in what way? Well, I pride myself in the ability to judge people. Their strengths, their weaknesses, who they really are instead of who they pretend to be. And who do you think it is I'm pretending to be, Alan? Oh, well, I'm not sure. You're a very good detective, but you can also be very gentle. You can curl up with a little child, read them a story, and make them feel that everything is right in the world. You're talking about when I took care of Tamara the other night. Why is that unusual? It's not unusual. It's just familiar. You really miss her, don't you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up Annie. You don't have to be sorry, Alan. I'm not surprised she's on your mind. After all, Josh and Reva just won't let the poor thing die. I mean, this ridiculous theory that, that Annie's alive and, and up to no good, it, it must be very difficult for you to listen to this nonsense. Especially during the holidays. Look, I don't pay any attention, nor do I care what Josh or Reva think. Well, I wouldn't dismiss them quite that easily. Why do you say that? I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up. Bring what up? When they're not busy blaming me for Josh's behavior, they're pointing a finger at you. A very accusatory finger, I might add. For whatever reason, they somehow think that you're involved in all of this as well. Drew, Drew, we cannot send away Michelle like that to get away from Danny. Why not? She can go to med school in China, South America, you're wherever crazy. she wants Look, to go. She has family here. She loves people here. She has people that love her here, okay? And you don't. Look, Drew, you're not gonna talk me out of this, okay? I know what I'm doing here. Bill, please talk some sense into him. I have pride. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet you tried, Bill. You just can't wait for him to leave so you can get your hands on Michelle. Drew, Drew, that is not true. true. That is Look, true. Lay off, Bill. I, did you play lay lay off tell Look, I asked him to take care of Michelle for him. Hand off the woman I love. What are you talking about? He's gonna help me. He's gonna keep her safe. Really? Oh, what about me? Don't you know everything I've done? I've done for you. I love you, Jesse. You know that. Hi, happy New Year. Could you bring us a couple of bottles of your best champagne? Actually, I prefer mineral water. All right, a couple of bottles of your best mineral water, too. Thank you. All right, follow me. we got a corner table over here. All uh, right, this way. Okay. Is this all right with everybody? Can you win Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Here we are. Let's enjoy the evening. This reminds me of a New Year's Eve I spent in Greece once. Dating an old ruin? Ben. No, please, I love archaeology. Tell us more. Yes, you should listen to this. She's led a very exciting life. Go ahead. I was dating the son of a shipping fortune named Dimitri. Well, I wanted to spend New Year's Eve all alone, and he wanted to go out. And of course, since I loathe confrontation, I gave in. We flew to the most exclusive club in Monaco. Now, I expected to walk in and see it filled to the rafters with nouveau riche wannabes, but it was completely empty. Not a soul there. Dimitri spent a fortune to guarantee that we both got what we wanted New Year's Eve. I got to spend the evening all alone with him. He got to go out. Oh, it was very romantic. It's an astounding story. 
I've never had a tryst in an empty restaurant. Have you, Blake? Have you had a tryst? In... I'm going to have to try that. I really am. I was wondering where my mineral water was. Mm. A lot of things I'm going to have to try. And I have to thank you for this opportunity. And Ben, I actually have to thank you, too. Oh, and why is that? For my freedom. You gave me my freedom. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Mineral water? Mineral water and champagne? I would like to propose a toast to my soon-to-be ex-wife and the man that she thinks she's falling in love with, my little brother, Ben. Here's to everybody, onward and upward. Now then, I would like to propose a New Year's toast to brotherly love. All right, because all right, brotherly... all right, Ross, that's enough, okay? You made your point. Did I, Blake? India, did I make my point already? Is that what this is all about? You overheard what I said to Ben when you came in with the boys. That you thought you were falling in love with me? Is that true? Well, see, that's good. Love is good now. We've already put that aside. It is so healthy to get in touch with our feelings. Now, I would like to propose one final toast. Actually, it's more of a... Uh, God damn, what's that word? It's a confession, because I hate to admit this, but I have been lying. I've been lying to you, to you, to you, but most importantly, and rather sadly, I have been lying to myself, and that is simply not good. So here's the truth. The God's honest, absolute truth is this. I hate you, I hate you, I hate the two of you together. You are two of the most self-absorbed people I've ever met, and you deserve each other. Now there, that is the truth. No more lying, no more pretense. Here's to me. After an absence of about 20 years, Ross Marler is himself again, and if anybody here doesn't like that, they can stick. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't know what is in that stuff, but it's pretty scary. I mean, you don't even know that you're under the influence until you're not under it anymore. Does that make any sense? Couldn't have said it better but myself. It, it explains everything. It explains what you did with Cassie and with Terry. You had nothing to do with any of that stuff. You were under suggestive powers or something. But I'd still like to know how it ended up in your aftershave. I've been thinking about that. Remember right after Halloween, we got that uh, delivery from the pharmacy, and, and we, neither one of us knew what it was about. Neither right. one of us placed an order. There was aftershave in that Yes, delivery. there was. And then I caught Terry upstairs in our bathroom shortly after that. She said she was probing some break-in investigation, but that wasn't it at all. She was up to something. You guys were right. We found trace elements of a very powerful drug in Josh's blood, not to mention the aftershave. See, didn't I tell you? You're not going crazy. You were drugged. What's it was the name a setup. Of the drug? Frank. the drug is called SL-422. It's the same drug that we use in Ken Norris's investigation. And, and what exactly does it do? It's a true serum, but it renders the subject highly suggestible. So it's true. I was drugged. Yeah, but by who? You're not going to like this, Frank. By Terry DeMarco. <laughs> <laughs>